Imagine being able to take a motion control camera robot with you anywhere you go in your pocket. This is the Trexo Wheels Go robotic camera dolly, and it has managed to pack all kinds of features into this tiny, pocketable, content creator friendly package. Starting off then with a couple of basics in an overview of this, you can see that it has this swing out arm and that arm is going to allow it to do various different moves and allow you to set it up with a multitude of different um, cameras and also in different shooting scenarios. For example, you could be attaching a smartphone to this, but you could also attach a mirrorless camera to this as well. On the front of the unit just here, we have four buttons and a screen. Those are gonna allow you, if you don't want to use the app, to control the unit and program in all of the different moves that you want it to be able to do. Now, in addition to that, actually when you have the app, and I'm gonna set this up just here and give you a little bit of demonstration of this, you have voice control built in. So for example, start move 20 centimeters forward, linear, go. And we have our move started. Now obviously at the moment I'm using this with my phone just here and I could just be doing it on the phone, but you can actually get an Apple Watch compatible version of the app which will allow you to control with voice commands from a distance. So you can have your phone filming on the Trexo wheels just here and then you can use your Apple Watch to control it with voice commands and it is actually pretty responsive. So again, for example, try a little circle move. I've got quite a small desk here so we'll see how it fares with that. Start circular move, radius 10 centimeters, duration 20 seconds, go. And we have it starting. So with that voice command, it's gonna allow you just that little bit more flexibility to not have to go in and program lots of things and just tell it what you want it to do. And then all of the artificial intelligence which is built into the app and the unit will take over and it will start your move going. And if you don't tell it to do anything different and you just tell it to go again, it'll just repeat the last move that you programmed into it. Now, personally, a lot of the time, I would probably not use the voice commands. I would be there dialing things in with the, with the app and just programming it like that. That's my preference. But the fact that they have got this built in is really handy if you are the kind of person who's going to be trying to film yourself and do lots of different things, and maybe you are using your phone to film yourself, well, then you can use your Apple Watch and you can give commands and set up the unit like that, and it really does work. So that's, uh, that's a bonus. Turning the unit on is really straightforward. And then once it is turned on, we should be able to connect it up to the app. And yeah, it's just automatically connected just there. And then you can just go through the menu here and I'm gonna show you a few different examples of this. So starting off with the linear path, we already saw it do this at the beginning when I introduced it. You can basically tell it how far you want it to travel and how long you want it to take to travel that distance. Once you've got that set, you can go down to the ease in, ease out. Now this is going to allow it to start a little bit slower and then ramp up the speed. And likewise, when it gets to the end, it will gradually decrease speed and then stop. It's a little bit more graceful and it stops it jerking around. So if you're doing a repeated move and you want it to just go smoothly, then having that ease in, ease out, just dialed up a little bit is beneficial. If you take that up too far, then it's going to perhaps be a little bit too gradual. And this will be a matter of taste, you know, you can just dial it in and work out what's gonna work for you. Once you've got that set, you click at the bottom to send it to the device. At that point, it is there and it will go. But the point is that we can just uh, program all this in. You can tell it to reverse the direction. Now on the circular path menu just here, it's very intuitive. Again, we have a distance uh, but this time it's measured as a radius because we're gonna be going around in a circle. And then we have duration and we have ease in, ease out. We also have this little slider just here, which is going to basically tell it how far we want it to go around. So you don't have to do a complete 360. You can tell it just do a 180 or you can tell it to do 90 degrees or 45 degrees, however far you want it to go. You just dial it in and then you program in the radius of the circle that it's gonna make. And then once that's all set, you click go and it will go off and it will make a circle. Now, this is lovely if you wanna do product shots, if you wanna orbit around something and keep it in the center of frame. Now, the bigger the item, the bigger the circle you're probably gonna to have to make. The only real limitation with this is how large an area of flat, smooth surface you have. 
So if you have a very, very large table, or if you have a really smooth floor, you can do some huge orbits and have it work really, really well. But on a smaller desk, you're going to want to keep those radiuses much smaller. And therefore, you know, you're probably between 10 and 20 centimeters at most on most tables. Out of all the moves that this is capable of, I think the orbit is perhaps one of the most enticing because you get a huge amount of parallax. And when you're filming something like that, it really does make the subject the center of attention. I'm going to go through the menu, go to turntable mode. Now in turntable mode, it works in a very similar fashion to uh, actually the orbit mode that we've already seen. However, with the turntable, you are actually going to be using the device as the center of frame and your camera will be fixed on a tripod looking at it. And then the Trexo wheels will make a circle basically on the spot and act as a product turntable. There are two versions of this. One is a photo mode. So if you want to capture a 360 photo scan of your object, that is the one to go for. And you've got your slices there and your interval and your shutter speed. So you can really dial it in to be accurate and controlled. You also have the video mode, which is the one that I have used more. You can change the direction of rotation. You can tell it how long you want it to take to do a rotation. So basically that is telling you the speed that it's gonna spin at. And then you just set it going. This is really nice if you're looking for some dynamic product shots. And I've been doing a review of some zoom units and it's been perfect for getting some interesting shots of those small recorders. Now you're probably thinking, when I go into product turntable mode, how do I get my product to sit on top of this? Well, they ship it with this fun little turntable. It's made of uh, black glossy perspex and it has all the connections you need just there to get it locked in. Screws into the top quarter 20 and then once it's in, the whole unit becomes a really satisfying little product turntable Again, it's got a lot of character, feels like uh, some kind of little product robot. And then you can just dial in your move, tell it which way you want it to go. I'm going to put it off to the side a little bit so we don't collide with the phone. And then send to device, play, and it will just spin around. And now we have our product turntable and we can take whatever we want. I've got a mouse just here, place it on top, and we've got our rotating shot. Now in this situation, I'm looking straight down on it and it's perhaps not how you would use it. But the point is, it is easy to set. Moving on from product turntable modes, we are going to look at the control wheel mode just here. Now this is so you can actually program it to do something. And again, I'm gonna kick that wheel out at the back. And I can then use this little joystick on the screen to move it around. And I can drive it around like a little remote control car, but you can also record movements and we've got the ability there to perhaps do something a little bit more complex if we wanted to. So you're not just uh, limited to the linear tracking or the circle movements. You can actually make something which steers around object. Finally, at the bottom just here, we can see me and we can see that we're in the camera mode. What I think is interesting about this is the vast number of options we actually have for how we're going to film things, which I was actually really impressed by because with a lot of similar camera apps, you don't have the uh, vast array of options that the actual phone is capable of. So for example here, we can see we can choose any of the back proper cameras. We can also choose the front camera if we want. We can also go down and actually see that there are many different options of the front camera. So you can record two of them or three of them at once. So that means you can do your wide, your ultra wide, and your close up camera all at the same time, which is super impressive for a third party app. The one that really got me was the back LiDAR sensor. So you're able to record depth information as well. So you could do something really quite complex with this if you wanted to. And it's all just there waiting for you to explore in the camera settings just here. Got an option of H.264 and H.265. You can enable HDR and you can also change the bit rate to actually get a little bit higher quality if you want as well. Now, a lot of people won't touch this and they'll only use it for selecting which camera they wanna use. But if you do wanna dive into the menus there, there are tons and tons of options. We have some options on uh, how we're actually going to be exposing and what the look is gonna be. So we can dial down our exposure. For example, just here, we can see I'm a little bit overexposed. We can just dial that down. And it's nice to have that in the app and you can kind of lock it in however you want it. You can also enable face tracking mode. Now, obviously I'm not uh, 
hooked up to this at the moment properly, but we can see there's a little um, square around my face and it is gonna follow me around. And I've tried this out and it will, in the vertical mode with the Trexo wheels, allow you to have the Trexo wheels follow you around the room. So you can use it like a robotic cameraman if you're presenting to camera and you want it to be able to follow you through a space, then this is the mode for you and it will just track your face intelligently within that and you could just turn that off as well. You can quickly and easily flip between the front camera and the rear camera, just with the button just there, so you don't have to jump into the menus. You can change frame rates. We've got 30, 60, 24, 25, and back to 30. So there's a lot of control within the camera app on this, which is really good to see. Just showing you a little bit what uh, time-lapse mode is actually gonna mean just here. So for example, we'll set it to just one minute and video duration, three seconds, sure, that's all fine. Center device, play, and you can see it's moving in increments. This is very normal for anything that's doing a time lapse because time lapses may take place over a very long time. And if it is constantly moving, it's not gonna be able to move slow enough in order to be able to keep that move going for an hour or two or three. So by doing discrete movements, you actually find that it's going to give you more flexibility when you're doing time lapse. Now, in addition to that, we do have the little port just here, which is cam control port. With the correct cable, you will be able to plug your mirrorless camera or DSLR into this and have it trigger and have it trigger a photo when it is stopped. So you can tell it what interval you want and it will be able to intelligently create that time lapse for you with that control just there. So it allows the Trexo wheels to talk to your camera essentially. To start then, there's something incredibly enticing about a small piece of equipment that will just slip into your camera bag. It won't really take up too much space, but it gives you a multitude of different options for camera movement and something which perhaps is really going to enhance what you're doing. Now that might be product shots, it might be just, you know, your Instagram reels, whatever it happens to be, or it could be something a little bit uh, more photographer focused, say like uh, you're doing behind the scenes or you're doing a time lapse of a shoot. Well, now you can give it movement and you don't have to take anything really big with you. You can just take this, place your phone on it and grab that behind the scenes shot and make it really dynamic without having to bring lots and lots of extra equipment or large sliders. So I think that it's really appealing in that sense. If you're interested in the Trexo Wheels Go unit, you can check out the links below. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them down there as well.